So, <clears throat> so here we have um, some emulation of the famous AX80 VFD displays. Um, what I've actually got here is two 0.96 inch displays, 128 by 64. Um, but I think really there is a three inch display um, available, which is uh, 256 by 64, which would probably be more suitable. It's a three inch display with one complete SPI display. Um, I've not used them because they're too big for my project and they were quite expensive to buy as a test. So I've done it with 0.96s. This is um, an MKR Zero, which is a 32 bit SAMD processor. And um, that's these two chips are the standard um, 748C154s, which are used in the AX80 to take the four address lines and generate <coughs> 32 select signals, effectively 16 on, on each chip. And then what I've done simply is put them through 4503, sorry, 4504 level converters to drop them down to 3.5 volts because the synth was originally 5 volts. So I've dropped them down to 3.3 for the select lines. And I've dropped, these are the, um, data lines, which are 13 of them are required. So I've, again, I've used three 4504s, which gives me 18, but I've only used um, 13 of them. And again, I've dropped the levels down from five volts to 3.3 volts. And originally I tried it with a Pico, but unfortunately the Pico was <coughs> one pin short. I could only do six interrupts and I needed seven. And it didn't work anyway, it didn't handle the interrupts very well. Um, so that was a bit of a, blow, a blowout. So I moved over to the SAMD and I've wired it up exactly the same, except what I've done now, because the SAMD Arduino board doesn't have many pins. I've used a couple of um, 74HC165s um, to give me 16 inputs and driven by the Roxmux um, library. And I'm reading the um, 13 address lines here on these two chips. Um, so the select lines generate interrupts, which the MKR handles and reads in the data. So for example, I've, I've, had to, well, I've been messing around with the code, so it's a bit screwed up at the moment. So effectively, this is parameter one and this is parameter four. And I'll show you what I mean. There's, there's E1 which can vary between 16 foot, 4 foot and 8 and sorry, 4 foot, 8 foot and 16 foot, turning the pot, etc. So if I turn the, the pot, you'll see there's 16 foot, then it moves to the middle for 8 foot, then it moves to the top for 4 foot, so which is effectively what it does in the um, AX80. And I'll tidy this graphics up, this is just a test, it was really horrible, but it was just a test really to see if it worked. So that's that. And if I go to parameter four, I push in the four button. You see, I've got four there, and I've got zero to ninety to ninety nine now. So I can vary zero to ninety nine. And my cat's just come into the room for attention, but he's not going to get any yet because I'm just going to finish this. So there's the graph going up and down, um, zero to ninety nine. And I've got a bit of a glitch there around third of the way up I don't know what it is but it's on all of them so maybe I'm missing something um, <clears throat> I need to entirely up all the code and you'll work out what's going on so imagine I've done that if I do that five times I'll have the five displays of the AX80 um, available to me excuse the camera flicker because that's the well the LEDs work now if I change patches as well so if I go back to preset by pushing the preset button no, that's that's actually patch B4. So I can go through the patches by going uh, up or down. And you can see that these are changing accordingly. So it still needs a little bit of work, but I think it's almost there. Um, and if I go to bank A or... Presets, I should say. You can see there. 
the octave switching. So that seems to work quite well. Probably needs a little bit of tidying up. Who knows? Okay, there we go.